Forbes calls it the new college football. This is the business of winning. You need to be on top of your game. This is competitive video gaming, known as eSports. It is predicted to become the biggest spectator sport, surpassing even American football by 2025. We want to celebrate this sport and make it the largest sport in the world. You have to see it to believe it. It's like seeing the seven wonders of the world. I completely envisage it as going to be big, and I think it's still only beginning. This is the story of the Kingmakers. Fall 2018. Inside the Barclays Center in downtown Brooklyn, the preparations for one of the biggest tournaments in esports, ESL One New York, are in high gear. It's days before the tournament is set to begin. Ulrich Schultz and a team of well over 100 people had flown in from Europe two weeks ago to get the arena ready for the event. This is the fifth time that we're in New York. We bring the content, we bring the players, we bring the excitement of esports. Ulrich Schultz is the senior VP of the tournament's eponymous company, ESL, formerly known as Electronic Sports League. He has been working in the gaming industry since its early days. The important phase when it comes to building an event is about two weeks long. That's the moment when everybody starts flying in, the players are coming in and preparing for the match, and the arena is being finished, the stage is being built. On the surface, his work seems similar to the preparation entailed in most sports events that take place at the Barclays Center. But Schultz knows it takes more than what meets the eye to create a great esports tournament. One of the biggest challenges for the sport is the, the connectivity and the stability of the connection. But if that isn't there, then the event has some serious issues. Connectivity is vital for esports, short for electronic sports. Unlike the basketball or hockey played on the courts of the Barclays, the battlegrounds of eSports take place inside the virtual space of the internet, and the matches are fought by the players' avatars on the screen. Whenever a game is ready to be competitive, has a certain critical mass, then people will call it an eSport. Ralph Riker, who founded ESL in 2000, may be one of the few people who is best qualified to define what an eSport is. I was a player myself. I was competing in what we call today eSports tournaments. It was very early days. We would play in a dorm room, in a school gym, but there was no stage, no stadium, and there was no name eSports there yet. What we wanted to do is to make sure that the next generation of players actually get, um, get credits and get um, like any other sports uh, celebrated rather than being criticized for it. Nearly two decades on, organizers like ESL have taken eSports from dorm rooms to some of the biggest stadiums in the world and propelled professional gamers to rock star status. In a couple of days, several of the world's best players will compete for the championship title before thousands of cheering fans. Two tournaments will be played. The first, the Elite ESL One, at which first tier teams will vie for the number one spot. The second, MGA, short for the MSI Gaming Arena, whose players were chosen through a summer long open online qualifier. Every spot on the stage of the Barclays has been hard-earned. The pressure is really high. You really have to be strong mentally to become the best. I played for the national Spanish team with only 12 years old. My dream is to become the best player in the world in a Spanish team and win the major. 
always been considered one of the best snipers or AWP players in North America. We're pretty much favorites to win the tournament. I never thought about to become a pro. In our country, it's really crazy. But now it's, it's happened. We can beat them. We can beat every team. Fitch, whose real name is Bektiar Bayatov, plays for Team Avangar from Kazakhstan. Esports has had a diverse talent pool from the beginning. Elite esports teams can be found wherever there is internet connectivity. Avangar is one such example. But even in the seemingly egalitarian universe of the internet, the playing field isn't exactly leveled. We have to play on the Germany server. Between Germany and Kazakhstan, it's too, I mean, they're too far from each other. So right now we're living in, in Ukraine, Kyiv. Because of the, the internet latency or delay, we can't practice against European teams from North America. We'll go over there and get that higher quality of practice because European teams kind of dominate the scene. The scenario described by Fitch and Shazib Khan, known by his alias Shazam, is one of the many reasons a tournament like ESL1 can be of service. Infrastructure in, a, in some of these markets has come later than in the Western world. It really is about providing a great tournament. We have teams or players, and the way they compete really shows their strength. And in eSports terms, connectivity is both physical and psychological. There's a lot of opportunity for those events to connect and just engage with uh, both the players as well as other fans. For a sport that happens largely in the virtual world, the opportunity to connect in the real world is critical to building a community. The mega event will be attended by tens of thousands of fans. Some of them come from as far as the other side of the world. I'm from Vienna, Austria. I'm from Georgia. I've met some people from France. I came from St. Louis, Missouri. While others are lucky to enjoy it close to home. I'm local to New York. I'm from Long Island. Esports have the fastest growing fan base of all sports, and these fans are the lifeline of the fledgling industry. It is an uphill battle for the esports community to get recognition. That makes the community overall much closer to the sport, so to speak. And every fan, to some extent, feels that he is part of that community and it, he is helping it to grow. Uh, event brings together people that love the same thing, and that's the love of video games and the impact that it brings upon their lives. It just feels so different. You feel at home. It's just, it's great. I recommend it. Hello. I came to an event with uh, my friend Alex. It's a good experience to meet people. It grows the community and makes it more connected. Ethan Hartman has been coming to ESL One New York since 2016, when he was only 15 years old. When I first walked in in 2016, it was just insane to me that this game was that big. You can see it online, but you don't get the scale of it. You have to see it to believe it. It's like seeing the seven wonders of the world. The experience deeply impacted him and inspired him to pursue a career in gaming. Like many aspiring gamers of his generation, Ethan is an avid streamer. On his itinerary this year is a one versus one match with his hero, the streamer and pro player, Nothing. And I actually got recognized by one of my viewers, so. You know, that was a pretty good experience, you know, showing me that I'm actually doing something right, so. 
While fans enjoy the festivity of the event, behind closed doors, the battle has begun. Day one of the MGA tournament, four teams from the open qualifiers will fight through the quarterfinals for their chance at the finals. Who will get on the big stage where dreams are made and play in front of thousands of fans? Will the crowd favorites sail their way through the semifinal as predicted? In downtown Brooklyn, New York, an elite sport tournament is underway. The Barclays Center is packed with passionate fans whose favorite athletes are playing with neither soccer balls nor basketballs, but keyboards and mouses. The name of the game is eSports. There isn't just one eSports. eSports is a whole variety of games. There are tactical games, strategical games, more fantasy-based games, sports simulations. There's really something for everyone. For this particular tournament, the only game in town is one of the most popular titles of all time. I came here for the Counter-Strike tournament. Seas go. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO, is a first-person shooter game that has been massively popular for over two decades. CSGO is my favorite game. So my main game that I play right now is CSGO. Behind closed doors, the battles of the MGA semifinal are heating up. It's time for the teams to step up their game. Counter-Strike's a five versus five game, and uh, pretty much people have assigned roles. My role is to use the sniper rifle, which is called the AWP. You've got an in-game leader. He's kind of like the captain of the team in-game. He's the one that calls all the shots. Then you've got the riflers, some are the entry fraggers, and those are the guys that go in first. Sometimes you'll have like a lurker. The more you learn about it, the more in-depth it becomes, the more complex it becomes. Only the best two teams are given the opportunity to compete on the big stage. For half of the players, that means they will pack up and go home tonight. People think that being a professional player is a perfect job, but after you become one, you realize that you need to sacrifice almost everything because the competition is so high that your whole life is just training and training and training. The Spanish team Movie Star Riders is the first to be eliminated after two losses, while Shazam and his teammates at Complexity Gaming are the first to enter the final after two wins. We managed to have pretty good starts on both the matches, and I think we started getting sloppy. Luckily, we, we recovered in the end, and we got the W. Hopefully, going into the finals, that we, we don't do that again. Only one more team will make it to the finals. After three games and fighting their way up from the lower bracket, Fitch and his teammates at Avangar snatched the remaining spot in the finals. It's really nice to be in final. Everyone's just glad to be here. We're still favorites to win the tournament. I hope we will bring the trophy home tomorrow. Tonight, both teams go to bed with a dream almost realized, though only one will wake to be the winner. Being a professional gamer may look like a dream job, but it is real hard work to stay on top of the game. Our practices could range from, you know, eight to 10 hours a day on our own time. You know, we'll play like pickup games with other pro players. We could find ourselves playing like 12 hours a day easily. You've got millions of other kids that are playing just as much that would love to be in your position and take your job. Uh, so you have to be the best. It's hard work. It's for, if, if you want to win, you should work hard. Uh, our team average age is 19. They ended school, 
and they didn't go to university. They came to play this game. Our job is, I think, best job in the world to sit and play computer games. But it's one side. Second side is, well, if you lose, you can lose everything because these guys don't have education. They don't have plan B. In the brave new world of esports, it's not only the players who are young. The entire business model is still in its infancy. So I was about 18, and I wanted to send my team over to America to play in a tournament, and, and ended up having to sell my car um, and fund my team. That was 2004, and selling his car has paid off. Today, Sam Matthews is the owner of esports heavyweight Fnatic that has fielded professional teams in more than a dozen games. It wasn't even a question in my mind that it wasn't going to be big. The internet's going to get faster, computers are going to get better, and competition is going to become easier and easier on a, on a video gaming device. It was the early days of eSports. Finding people who believed in his vision was a challenge. Finally, Endemic sponsors saw the potential and got on board. One of his first sponsorships came from the computer manufacturer, MSI. What really held the industry together for many years was just the computer manufacturers recognizing that these guys are, are, are the evangelists. The MSIs of this world who really were supportive of the ecosystem. And then, you know, slowly but surely the audience grew and it became way more appealing. The success of Fnatic and eSports at large rejuvenated MSI, a computer manufacturer that once struggled in a stagnating PC market. Today, this top-selling gaming computer brand boasts annual revenue of over 4 billion US dollars. And MSI is not alone. Computer hardware manufacturers have seen an industry-wide revival because of eSports. These days, hardware manufacturers experience a different kind of headache. When we're talking about a gaming PC, everything is becoming more and more cutting edge. If you're a professional gamer, you're talking about being able to uh, perhaps run CSGO at 300 plus frames per second. How do the manufacturers keep up with the demanding needs of their gamers when the life and death of an avatar can occur in a split second? Uh oh, oh dear. Oh, no. The popularity of video gaming has groomed a new breed of athletes, the pro gamers, and given birth to a behemoth of an industry, eSports. An ecosystem has developed over time that includes the tournament organizers, professional teams, fans, and content producers, as well as hardware and software developers. Now, new technology is taking the game to the next level. We've come a long way, but the games are constantly evolving, and it does mean that the, the hardware is, is constantly getting better, and you need to make sure that you've got the best stuff and upgrading quite frequently, you know, every sort of 18 months. Recognizing the potential of eSports, many hardware companies have put out products devoted to gaming. But building a good gaming PC requires more than lumping high-end components together. It's like everyone has, you know, the same, the same cement to build a chimney with, the same wood to build a cabin with, but not everyone has the same kind of architectural design methods. This is kind of the, the niche market that we are trying to dig into. Benjamin Novotny, known by his stream alias Binga, works as a senior engineer at MSI one of the world's most popular gaming computer brands. To satisfy gamers' wants and needs, MSI makes sure they put the right people to work. I was doing Mandarin shoutcasting for StarCraft. Yeah, I worked like 40, 50 hours per week, but also I played 30 hours per week. And that they talk to the right people. We also collect a lot of feedback from our end users. Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, 
We also examine professional gamers feedback whenever they go to this tournament or that tournament. And the number one priority of any serious gamer? Cooling. The sound is heat. Preventing overheating. Call it anything you want. The top priority for any serious gamer is to stay cool, inside and out. The most important things of the, the gaming PC is the performance. The better performance, it means more heat when it's running. If a component overheats, it may slow down or even shut down to prevent further damage to the part and cause the device to crash. It is a nightmare for any gamers. Computer manufacturers like MSI invest heavily in research and resources to prevent their products from overheating. Today, Novania will test one of the latest desktops using MSI's patented Silent Storm cooling solution. He wants to find out if the new product's thermal design helps keep it cool and quiet under a severe stress test. Our desktops that have three different chambers one for the, the power supply, one for the GPU, and then one for the CPU. Air flows in to that chamber and that chamber only. And then it flows out from that chamber. Most other standard gaming PCs have their hot air. It's mixing inside the chassis. And this makes a very big difference. We're talking maybe 20 degrees Celsius. The new desktop passes the test with flying colors. While a desktop chassis can be divided into different chambers to help cooling, a motherboard is an open component where hot air flows will mix. Gary Wong, the product manager overseeing motherboard production, needs different thermal solutions. We don't have much space to put the fans on our motherboard. So that's why we have two passive thermal solutions. The first one is we use materials like uh, aluminum, like copper. The second one is the size, the surface to help the efficiency. Wang and his team are always on the lookout for the latest thermal technology. Their newfound cooling material came from a group of stargazers, NASA. This piece of metal is sprayed with the heat prevention paint used inside the space shuttle. The pink shields the astronauts from being roasted when traveling through the atmosphere. When the heated side goes over 125 degrees Celsius, the other side covered in paint remains a cool 30 degrees. Demand for high-end graphics cards has skyrocketed as gaming expands. Graphics card project manager Vincent Ho has to resolve the overheating issue before their products hit the market. GPU的performance会跟着温度去做变化。那现在其实是频率是动态的，温度越低的时候，频率会越来越高，效能就会得到更好。所以我们要把温度压到最低。我们是第一个推出双风扇的品牌，我们的风扇除了在取得温度之外
which team will walk away the winner. From better computers and faster internet to streaming platforms and social media, gaming has benefited from technological innovation. Now, gaming is driving that innovation. Formula One cars are always evolving. You need to be in the best car to be able to compete at the same level. That's kind of, to a point, what esports is like. You need to have the best components in the PC. The task of creating the most cutting edge hardware falls on manufacturers like MSI. 整个 ecosystem 跟呃这些游戏商的开发，把游戏的层次不断的提高，也代表在告诉这些 user， 哎，你可以有一个不一样的体验。游戏很多种类嘛，每一个的热键都是不一样的。我们有一个英文叫做 Dragon Center， 按了那个按钮以后，一打开，它看到你的 CPU、GPU、键盘的灯光控制等等，这些玩家需求的综合体，才足以被称为电竞笔电。The team at MSI's laptop division has been working on integrating NVIDIA's most powerful GPU into their newest gaming laptops. Today, MSI's new laptops will be presented at a press event at CES, the world's biggest electronic fair. The event will be attended by gaming industry heavyweights. Will MSI's work meet expectations? The product that we pushed out in 2018, which earned a wide and massive recognition, the GS75 is packing just plenty enough firepower to run almost any games. 我们今天是真的几乎整场爆满，所以其实今天一整个下来，我们觉得记者会还算相当的成功。2019 CES MSI New Product Lounge. Hope you guys had a good time and enjoy. While the hardware team may take a break to savor its success for now, the pro gamers are getting ready for the championship battles at both the MGA and ESL1 tournaments. First out, it's a Vanguard. To the stage here at the Barclays Center, ESL One, New York. It is complexity. From its humble beginnings in dorm rooms to its current stadium-wide appeal, esports has grown by leaps and bounds in the last decade, and so have the players. Last ten years, I'm playing every day, without any stops and like that. I'm from Kazakhstan, Almaty. In our country, it's really hard to explain parents like what it is, the video games. My parents they didn't agree because I, I was wasting my money, wasting my time for nothing. When I started playing Counter-Strike, I would play competitively, but there wasn't really a, like, you know, it wasn't big. I just play online a lot, and I just wanted to be the best, the best I could be. And then my junior year of college, I got offered my first contract. I made up my decision as soon as I got the offer that I knew I was going to pursue it. But I was really worried about, like, what my parents would say. I called up my dad and instantly he told me to go for it. And it was, it honestly caught me out in the wind because like, that's not what I expected at all. I was studying accounting, but it's not too interesting for me. Then I joined the, to the pro team and I had, I had the salary. Right now, my parents were really like, glad to see me here, like to, to watch my games, to like, really support right now. Everyone always tells me like, oh man, you're living the dream or it's a dream job and I try not to take it for granted. It definitely is and I love every minute of what I do. It's really nice to be in the final at this tournament. So everyone just glad to be here. I hope my boys can win them. I will try my best as always. Regardless of the crowd, it's always really exciting. They're cheering for you or against. The first half of the 2018 MGA final has ended with Avangar leading the winning round. The two teams will switch offense and defense sides when the second half begins. The tournament offers an opportunity for players and fans to connect and build their community. Everyone in the community knows each other. It's, it's more of like a friendship and a family. The sense of community is what brings people together and why diehard fans like Ethan Hartman return to the tournament year after year. Just great to keep going, 
and you know just have a, a refreshing moment where you're not like an outcast to it. You're more accepted there. It's just easier to branch out and meet people that have the same common hobby as you. When it comes to watching it, as soon as Counter-Strike Global Offensive came out, the company Valve started sponsoring events that they put money into the prize pools to actually fund like a competition that would be get intense for a high amount of money. So people will want to go see that. Game developers and publishers like Valve help shape the landscape of esports by making pre-existing games more esports friendly or developing games with strong competitive elements built into them. While most games adapt the five versus five match in tournaments, a new game genre has recently taken the world by storm, entirely upending the norm. Esports are on its way to become the most watched spectator sport. Its meteoric rise is the result of the passionate community that has mobilized around the scene. With the advancement of technology, more game titles are hitting the market than ever. Among them, one particular genre has become a real phenomenon. It's Friday afternoon. At the headquarters of Player Unknown's battleground, known as PUBG, people are fighting for their lives in a game. 전판에 매, 1세트에 매클러치가 11킬을 했거든요. 그죠, 그죠, 그죠. 트리그라운드는 오래되고 버려진 월드 세상의 어떤 특정 지역을 배경으로 하고 있고 그 특정 지역에 100명의 플레이어가 들어가서 최후의 한 명이 살아남을 때까지 생존과 전투를 벌이는 배틀로얄 장르의 게임이라고 말씀드릴 수 있을 것 같고요. 생존에도 굉장히 큰 중심을 두고 있기 때문에 건플레이에 익숙하지 않은 유저들이라고 할지라도 다양한 어떤 전략적인 선, 선택과 이런 그 상황을 이용하는 어떤 플레이를 통해서 마지막 1인이 될수 있다는 특징이 있는 것 같아요. T.S. Jung is the executive producer of PUBG. He had been developing this game since its early days. 월드가 크다 보니까 굉장히 그 많은 사람이 들어가야 되고 제작 기간이 상당히 오래 걸리는 편이라고 보시면 될것 같고 펍지의 게임 플레이와를 가장 잘 반영하는 디자인을 하고 그 디자인을 반영해서 엔지니어링 팀이 프로토타이핑을 하고 게임을 개발하면서 이터레이션을 여러 번 돌아서 게임 플레이를 검증하고 그 사이에 이제 아트 팀에서 그 비주얼적인 컨셉을 발전시키고 최종 결과물을 만들어서 세계 조직이 굉장히 유기적으로. 일을 해서 결과를 만들어 낸다고 보시면 될것 같습니다. PUBG is not the first battle royale game out there, but it is arguably the first of such games to achieve worldwide popularity and define the battle royale genre. Its success has inspired many game publishers to release battle royale game titles or update their current games in battle royale mode, like CS:GO. 현재는 배틀 로얄 장르가 굉장히 글로벌하게 성공하면서 대중화된 장르가 되었다고 볼수 있는데요. 다양한 게임 회사들이 이제 배틀로얄 장르에 도전하고 있는 상황인데 저희는 사실 이런 어떤 경쟁에 어, 경쟁을 신경 쓰고 그것에 대한 대응을 하기보다는 플레이어들이 즐거운 경험을 할수 있는 그런 게임 만들기 위해서 노력하고 있습니다. For a relatively small game publisher like PUBG to stand out in the competition, they need to think big. Like, really big. These days, one way to stand out from the pack is to make the game into an e-sport. To make games an e-sports title, there are technical challenges that need to be overcome. Uh, there needs to be e-sports version of the game that run on separate servers to ensure the stability. We also require some additional features, such as spectator mode. Leading the eSports tech unit at PUBG, Young Moon Jung knows that creating a successful game is one thing. 
and creating a successful eSport is entirely another. However, for Battle Royale games, the technical challenge is even greater than for other genres. The biggest challenge and biggest difference is the fact that many players participate in it at the same time. That's like never done in esports. It's really hard to show that efficiently. Each PUBG match fields 16 teams with four players in each team. Jung's team developed UI to provide data of players' actions to help viewers understand player strategy. We utilize the multi-view system because a lot of things are happening at the same time. So our viewers can choose what they want to watch. In 2018, PUBG hosted the first global tournament, PUBG Global Invitational in Berlin. I'm player unknown. And it's my absolute honor to be here tonight. With to $2 million up for grabs, PGI offers one of the highest prize pools in eSports, putting PUBG alongside eSports giants like Dota 2 and League of Legends. And I can't wait to watch some of the best PUBG players in the world fight it out to be crowned global champions. 현장에서 갔을 때 굉장히 많은 유저들이 전 세계에서 찾아오셔서 플레이를 즐겨서 봐주시는 모습을 봤을 때 굉장히 특별한 경험이었던 것 같고 그 직접 제가 개발한 게임이 e스포츠가 된다 이런 얘기를 할수 있는 상황 자체가 발생하지 않을 거예요. 굉장히 뿌듯했고 전 세계 있는 유저들이 그 자리에서 열광하고 뭐 이런 모습들을 봤을 때 진짜 행복했던 순간이었던 것 같아요. We believe that e-sports is a crucial way of providing entertainment and engagement to viewers and fans. The ability to provide both entertainment and engagement is what sets e-sports apart from traditional media and appeals to the digital natives. At the Barclays Center in downtown Brooklyn, that is exactly the experience tens of thousands of fans expect to enjoy. There's not really any room for mistakes. The MGA Grand Final has entered the second half. In the best of one match, Shazam and his teammates in complexity can't afford any missteps after losing their first half of the match. So good from Finch. Our captain, he just did a lot of good calls. He said, guys, we, we need to win this. For Avangar's Fitch and his team, it's their chance to make a mark. Both players have left everything behind to pursue a career in gaming and to carve a path for the next generation of gamers. The competition is heating up. Who will walk away from the 2018 MGA a winner? So good from Fitch. Spray control in a small gap towards CT, finds Stan. Now that's the AK gone. Death and Android. No hope. And that's it. Avangar, they've done it. 16 to 9 is what the final score, they take it. Your champions of the MSI MGA Finals, it's a Vanga. When we were winning rounds, we weren't winning them cleanly, so we were giving them a chance to get back in it. Our captain, Mr. James, he said, let's try like play randomly. It's the only one way to play and to win right now. Things also like went didn't go the right way for us in a sense that like uh, people were missing shots and you know, making poor decisions and you know you can't make those kind of mistakes in a uh, one map series. So. Everything was against them actually. So and the other thing is like we were good today. today. All my teammates just not, knew it that we just gonna won. Of the MSI MGA Finals, it's a banger. I don't know, we finally got some like few days for chills. Right now I'm here, I'm just living my life today. I don't want to talk about my future because no one knows what is happening, what is going to happen tomorrow. So. I'll keep playing as much as I feel like I can keep up, and I love doing it someday. I think I'd love to just like 
apply the skills and knowledge I have to continue working in the industry I love. Back at the Barclays, the grand final of the 2018 ESL1 is coming to an end. I went down and I went right in front of a pro player's family. And I pressed record to set up my camera. I, I captured one of the most famous moments of the whole entire tournament. Video games for me has always been the better entertainment media than traditional uh, media, so to speak. Why? Because it's interactive, it's social. It's something where you actually can build the story, be part of the story rather than just consume the story. Perhaps that is why eSports are taking over the crown of the biggest sport because everyone in the community can be part of the narrative. I just want to work for that stage one day. I just want to be a part of it somehow. We make sure that we're doing our best. It shows a level of commitment to both fans and professional gamers. If a professional gamer doesn't have any complaint about the desktop or the monitor that they're using, then we've done our job right. To see my name on the credit after Confetti Settle, that, that just got me so emotional because we did, we put a lot of hard work in it. The best thing about my job that I have a new job every year. It's such a dynamic industry, that's probably the reason why I'm still here, because that can't get boring. To me, it doesn't feel like work. It just feels like I'm having fun and, and creating a, a new type of entertainment, a global entertainment platform. To me, being so close to this youth movement is so inspiring and so invigorating that every day I get up and I'm tireless. Going from subculture to building an empire for the new king of sports, the story has just begun.